What's up guys, Cool Duty here, back again. For the first video in a long time, admittedly. I do apologize for being away for so long, but I keep promising to come back, and this time I mean it. I am truly coming back. And to start it off, new deck. Uh, I am showing my commander deck for Corvold, Fey Cursed King. Now, Corvold is a 5 mana 4-4 four four legendary dragon noble with flying, as most dragons have. Very few don't. Whenever he enters the battlefield, you sac or attacks, sacrifice another permanent. And whenever you sac another permanent, you draw a card, and he gets a plus one plus one counter. Now, you, when most people see this, they think aristocrats or something of that nature. I had a Lord Wingrace deck, and I just kind of, the switch was very natural. So for this video, I won't go over the mana base, but I am going to show off two lands that do a lot for the deck, being Handware Battlements. The ability to give Corvold haste on a land is big. And Reliquary Tower, because admittedly a lot of cards get drawn in this deck. so. Having the no maximum hand size is very helpful. So we're going to start off by showing off my uh, very large ramp package in order of CMC. Did that. Soul Ring, that's boring. Wayfarer's Bobble. It does everything the deck wants to do. It sacks itself for Corvold and gets lands into play that can make other triggers go off or we can just sack the land to Corvold when he attacks. Ramper Growth, a classic two mana ramp spell to go get any land, any basic land. Kamal's Druidic, eh, Druidic Vow. So this one's actually really weird and probably shouldn't be in the ramp category, but it's a legendary sorcery, so we have to control the legendary planeswalker or creature to even cast it. But it's green, green X. And we were. We look at the top X cards of our library and put all legendaries and lands onto the battlefield. Or legendaries with CMC X or less and all lands onto the battlefield. They put the rest in the graveyard and that does matter a little bit, but we'll get into that later. So I put it in the ramp category because it technically does ramp you. Excuse me. Harrow. 3 mana, instant speed, you have to sack a land, but you get two of them untapped. That's really good. Spring Bloom Druid is the same thing as Harrow on a 1-1 body, but the lands don't come into play untapped. Far Wandering is a 3 mana of ramp of growth, unless you have 7 cards in your graveyard, and then he goes to get 3 basic lands. Cultivate, 3 mana, put a land into play, and put one into your hand. Beanstalk Giant doesn't, as a creature, it doesn't matter. We care about the adventure half, which is three mana for our rampant growth, but the land comes into play untapped. Burnish Heart is three colors for a 2-2 two -two that you can pay three and sacrifice it, something that X still wants to do, to get two basic lands into play. Explosive Vegetation, four mana, two lands. Secure it is root. Now, I don't run any gates, so it's just another copy of Explosive Vegetation. Rapacious Dragon. This one's my favorite. Uh, 5 mana, 3-3 three, three, Dragon. And the ETBs, I get 2 Treasure. Treasure, I have to sack to get mana, so I get to draw more cards off Corvold. And I can sack the Dragon to Corvold. Uh, this next category is just a bunch of land synergy stuff. Stuff that messes with lands, cares about lands, anything of that sort. Wayward Swordtooth lets me put in extra lands into play. 3 mana 5-5 five five as well, which is never bad. Sylvan Awakening makes all my lands 2-2s two with Reach, Indestructible, and Haste. Turn Timber Sower. Whenever a land put one or more lands is put into a graveyard from my graveyard from anywhere, I get an 0-1 green plant, and I can paint green and sack three creatures. Put a land from my graveyard into my hand. Evolution Sage. Whenever a land ETBs proliferate. World Shaper. When it attacks, I mill three. And when it dies, all lands 
go from my graveyard to the battlefield. Centaur Vinecrasher comes in with 1-1 one, one counters, a number of 1-1 one, one counters, equal number of lands in my graveyard. And then whenever a land goes into my graveyard, I can pay green green to get it from my grave this from my graveyard into my hand. Omnixilis the Fallen. Five mana three three. Whenever a land ETB is under my control, he gets three counters and target player loses three life. Nesting Dragon. Five four flyer. Whenever a land ETB is, I get a O2 Dragon Egg. That whenever it dies, I get a 2 2 Dragon with Fire Breathing. Nissa Vital Force. These abilities don't matter. She can use this uh, bottom one the turn after she comes in. And that one says whenever I land ETBs, I draw a card. So with that emblem, whenever a land comes into play, I draw a card. And whenever I sack one of my lands to Corvold, I draw a card. So I just draw a lot of cards. Worm Harvest. I create a 1-1 one, one black and green worm for each land in my graveyard, and I can recast it from my graveyard by discarding lands. Mending a Dominaria will eventually put all lands from my graveyard back on the battlefield. The Gitrog monster is like a second core bolt, because on my upkeep I have to sack him or I sack a land, and whenever a land goes to my graveyard from anywhere I draw a card, he also lets me play an additional land on each of my turns. Now this was the commander of this deck for the longest time, when it was just a normal lands deck, like a land fall deck, instead of a land sacrifice deck. But yeah, Wind Grace, I can draw cards from discarding lands, put lands to my graveyard into play, and his ultimate lets me destroy six non-land permanents, and then I get a bunch of tutus. Rampaging Bailoff, a 6-6, six -six, and whenever a land ETBs, I get a 4-4. Four -four. Rubble Hulk's Power and Toughness are equal to the number of lands I control her as Blood Rush. For one red green, I can discard it to give target attacking creature plus X plus X or X is the number of lands I control. I use that Blood Rush a bit on Gorvold. Helps. Uh, this is the last lands card. Avenger of Zendikar. ETBs, I get a 01 plant for each land I control. Whenever I land ETBs, I put a counter on each plant I control. So these next couple cards just uh, can throw things into my graveyard. Let me look at the top couple cards. Ransack the lab. I get to look at the top three, put one into my hand, the rest of my graveyard. Grapple with the past, mill three, then put a creature or land from my graveyard to my hand. Grizzly Savage, reveal the top five, put a creature or land from among them into my hand, the rest of my graveyard. Moonlight Bargain. Uh, look at the top five. I may pay two life to keep any of the cards. For, or for each card I want to keep, I could pay two life. Uh, the rest go into my graveyard. Now we're under the board wipes. Gaze of Granite. Destroy each non land permanent with CMC X or less for green, black, black X. Blasphemous Act will do 13 damage to every creature and is cheaper for the amount of creatures in play. Savage Twister, another X to do X damage to each creature. Living Death basically swaps the creatures in your graveyard for the creatures in play. Excuse me. Find to Finality. Finality will give all creatures minus four, minus four, and put two counters on a creature, most of the time Corvold. Taste of Death will make each player sack three creatures. It's like a pseudo board wipe. More of like a big edict effect. Decimate destroys four. Oh yeah, this is the removal package now. Decimate destroys four different things. Beacon of Destruction has five damage to any target, and it shuffles back into your library so you can get it back again later and cast it. Beast Within will destroy whatever you want. As long, and then they get a three-three beast after it's destroyed. Playcrafter is another edict effect. They'll have to sack a creature or planeswalker, and if they can't, they have to discard a card. Putrefy can kill any artifact or creature that is in our way. Uh, the next three cards work with Corvold specifically. Because he has to deal with plus, because he gets plus one, plus one counters. So these next three cards deal with that. Hardened Scales will give 
an additional plus one plus one counter every time one or more is put on there. Winding Constrictor basically does the same thing. And Corpse Shack Menace doubles the amount of counters that are going to be put on any creature I control. Uh, this next card is honestly just a game winner with how many lands you'll have in play a lot of the time. Torment of Hillfire. So, for... It's Black Black X. Repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses 3 life unless they sack a non-land permanent or discard a card. If you make this like 40 or 50, which honestly isn't going to happen, but if you can even make it like 10 to 15, that's just devastating. This also has to do with a lot of mana, just in a different way. Sir Conrad the Grim. Whenever, a creature, whenever another creature dies, or a creature is put into a graveyard from anywhere, or leaves the graveyard, it, he deals one damage to each opponent, and for two mana, each opponent mills one. So you just make everyone mill a lot of cards, and a lot of creatures will go in there, and you slowly kill your opponents. Uh, Garrick, the Huntsman, makes wolves that you can sack to Korvold if you don't feel like sacking your lands at that point. You can destroy creatures to draw you a card, or if you can somehow get his ult off eventually, you'll, all your creatures will get plus two, plus three, and trample. Mishra's Bobble is zero mana, so it's just free. You sack it to look at the top card of target player's library and draw a card for the next upkeep. So essentially with Korvold in play, it is a uh, zero mana to draw two cards. Sporefrog. You sack it to prevent all combat damage. That's really good. Crop rotation actually sacks a land, which is something we want to do. And it replaces itself with any land in your deck. So if you're like, if you just want to get rid of a swamp for like a woodland cemetery. Torch Courier sacks itself via Corval Haste. Good Girl Response targets Cyclonic Rift. That's why we run it, Cyclonic Rift. That's why you're on this card. Rhythm of the Wild makes Korvold unable to be countered or any of our other important creatures, like Mayhem Devil, so when anyone sacrifices a permanent, he deals one damage to, eat to any target. Journey to Eternity, if Korvold were to somehow miraculously to be hit with removal before they're dead, you can send him to the graveyard, he'll come back, and then this flips into Atstall, Cave of Eternity, which you can pay five mana and tap this to get a creature from your graveyard back into play. Golgari Finebroker is a uh, kind of like Eternal Witness, but he only gets permanents, but he's also a lot bigger. Psychosis Crawler is power and toughness, equal number of cards in your hand, or whenever you draw a card. Deals one, each opponent loses one life. That's really good with the on You'd be surprised the work this does. Mastermind's Acquisition is just a demonic tutor. But I don't own a demonic tutor. And Command the Dread Horde. Choose any number of target creatures and or planeswalker cards in graveyards. Put them all onto the battlefield under your control, and you and this does damage to you equal to the number to the total CMC of those cards. Basically, this in a pinch can just win the game out of nowhere by stealing the creatures out of your opponent's graveyard and whatever you have in yours. Yeah, that's fine. That's Corvold lands matter. Tomorrow I'll be doing a Bant deck deck. So, yeah. I'm going to try to do more videos over the next couple weeks. So I honestly have nothing to do. We all know what's going on with the pandemic. So, stay safe. That's all I can say about that. Stay safe. I'm, also, I'm very sorry for being gone so long. I'm going to try to do a lot of videos over the next couple weeks. Stay tuned for all that. This is Kuladuta, and I will see you in the next video. See you guys.